Storage, 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 storage. Why am I running out of storage every single time? I think it's because I'm a content creator. I'm sure most content creators out there could relate to this because we all need storage to back up our footage. And uh, it is one of those things where we try to, we, we struggle to find the right solution, but that's what I'm here for. So what's up guys, Ibra here with How Reconnects, and I'm currently in the midst of upgrading my storage setup in order to archive the footage that goes into creating these videos. Now typically every project that I work here for How Reconnects uh, ranges between 15 to 30 gigabytes depending on its complexity, uh, but most importantly, organizing the footage, the After Effects log files, Premiere files, and other miscellaneous items takes time. But one of the key factors to consider when upgrading storage setups is particularly finding a one-size-fits-all solution that can host previous projects, but also being able to access them instantly is crucial. Now, initially, I started with a one terabyte Western Digital Black Drive, which housed some of my games and footage, but over time that kept filling up, so I had to add another one terabyte drive, and then another one, and then a four terabyte drive, almost to a point where, you know, I would be looking for spare drives in the studio to offload some of the footage and continue with my project. It really was a hindrance to my workflow. I was using this external drive bay from Silverstone that featured four three and a half inch bays, which obviously were populated, plus uh, they were running at USB 3 speeds, which was great, but the drives were slower to access, plus I wasn't able to configure a RAID setup uh, given that I've been mixed matching hard drives. So yeah, not really ideal for content creators. Finally, Western Digital reached out and asked us to check out their new MyBook Duo desktop RAID storage system. And given my current dilemma, this was just perfect timing. So let me walk you through the setup process and of course the performance gain that I was able to get after switching to the system right after a message from our sponsor. It's time to try something new with the K900M Mechanical Keyboard by Zalman with Kale Brown switches, onboard macro recordings and absolutely gorgeous RGB illumination with the white frame. Even your dog will go nuts. Check it out in the description below. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure if you guys care about design for an external storage system, but if you do, WD has done a fantastic job in that department. The chassis is primarily made out of plastic materials, which really isn't a bad thing since this is meant to be stationary at your desk, plus it helps bring down the cost of the system, which I'll go over shortly. The bottom half of the bay features the streamlined textures, which looks similar to the My Passport SSD I looked at a while back, and here's a quick comparison, plus you can check out that video right over here. The subtle white LED indicator spans across the front side of the unit, which looks quite unique in my opinion, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the design in the comments. Price-wise, you're looking at $260 for the 4TB base model. Adding another 2TB will cost you an extra $30. The 8TB variant goes for $330 at an extra 4TB, you're looking at $420. Bumping that up to 16TB will run you $600. And finally, the top-of-the-line 20TB model, which I have over here, costs $800. The Duo comes with RAID-optimized WD red drives, which are well known to deliver high-speed quality storage to rely on, and this model has two 10TB drives. Now, when you compare that to the standalone pricing, each drive would run you around $400. So from a value perspective, the Duo makes a lot more sense since you're getting a solid enclosure and the necessary software to get you up and running. As for ports, the Duo features two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A connectors, but be mindful that this interface is simply a rebrand of USB 3.0, plus you can use these ports as a hub to connect other USB devices, so that's awesome. There's also a single 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C connector, which is the main USB interface to connect the device to the computer, and there's the standard 12 volt power in. Do note that this protocol is reverse compatible with uh, USB 3.0 and 2.0 standards, and thankfully, out of the box, WD includes USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C to Type-C cable, a Type-C to Type-A cable, and the power adapter. Western Digital has built a solid reputation for themselves in the reliability department, and that includes taking proper security measures. There's a built-in 256-bit AES hardware encryption module, and when you set it up with WD's security software, your data is secured. So for instance, if someone decides to walk away with a duo containing your personal files, well, they'd be out of luck because they need a password in order to unlock the drive in the first place. Uh, but most importantly, I'm glad that Western Digital has included this feature because obviously having these drives inside your main PC is a lot more secure than having it externally. Uh, but at least we, you know, we have something like this 
uh, to keep our data secure. The Duo is also cross-compatible with both PC and Mac, so users who are invested in both ecosystems are not left out of the equation, which is awesome. The Duo is user serviceable if you need to replace or add storage later on. To access the drives, you'll have to open the top lid from the rear edge of the unit with the included disk replacement tool. Each hard drive is held in place by a tray and it features a latch, which can be gently pressed to unlatch the drive and you can easily slide that out. Just be mindful that the Duo does not support the hot swappable function when removing or adding a hard drive while it's powered on. WD highly recommends that you power down the unit and proceed with the teardown process. Before I wrap up this review, I wanted to uh, show you guys a little bit of an issue that I've been experiencing with uh, the Duo uh, system. So essentially, uh, it's kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is actually going to restart my PC and let's just wait for it to boot up. So the problem is ever since I've connected that to my PC, my main workstation PC, my system takes a while to boot up. So let's say you know, normally, you know, I have an RD400, which is an NVMe SSD. So typically my boot times are roughly like 10 seconds to get it up and running within the, to the desktop. But after connecting that guy, my boot up times have prolonged significantly, which is a bit of a problem. And I think part of that is due to the IO being initialized. Uh, on my Ryzen PC, so I think it's, um, you know, every time when you boot up your system, it has to initialize the I.O., the, the memory, the CPU, uh, I think the GPU as well. So, um, yeah, as you can see, this is uh, this is kind of what I've been experiencing uh, ever since I've connected that. I'm not even sure if this is a common thing with external storage solutions. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, I think we're booting into Windows, but uh, it's a good thing to note. Since I have the 20 terabyte variant, the two 10 terabyte WD red drives were configured in RAID 0 out of the box to deliver maximum speed and capacity, and that's kind of what I need if I want to edit off the Duo within Premiere. But the user always has the option to configure the drives to RAID 1 for redundancy or use it as two independent drives, and all of this can be managed through the WD utility software. So the setup was pretty straightforward. I connected the system to my PC, installed the utility software, the security software, and the backup software. And the first thing I did was run a few benchmarks to see how well this compared to my previous setup. Starting with synthetic benchmarks, I fired up Crystal Dismark and tested the Duo by setting the number of tests at five and a file size of one gigabyte. And the results were pretty darn impressive. Now, as you can see, the Duo dished out roughly 336 megabytes per second on reads and roughly 300 megabytes per second on writes, whereas the single blue drive dished out 120 megabytes per second on reads and 118 megabytes per second on writes. Moving on to 80 Disk Benchmark, a program that tests the drive's read and write speeds using incremental file sizes, the Duo, as expected, takes the lead once again, dishing out well over 380 megabytes per second in both read and write performance, whereas the single WD Blue drive scored 125 megabytes per second on read and 118 megabytes per second on the write test. Onto some real world tests, I transferred a 47 gigabyte folder packed with 4K videos back and forth between the desktop and the drives. So starting with the Duo, that whole folder took 2 minutes and 42 seconds to transfer, averaging between 280 to 300 megabytes per second write. Performing that backwards was a bit faster because the read speeds were topping at 366 megabytes per second, so that shaved like 30 seconds compared to the write test. And to give you a little bit of a perspective, I performed the same test on the My Passport SSD from WD, and believe it or not, the Duo and the Passport were almost neck to neck with those read and write tests, which was fantastic. RAID 0 for the win, guys. Lastly, the single blue drive took a while to complete both tasks, but that was expected considering the drive's specifications. Well, the results really do speak for themselves. And I'm glad that I switched the Duo from Western Digital because now I can instantly access files. Uh, and also given the terrific read and write performance of this system, I can edit directly off of this system within Premiere, which is fantastic. But most importantly, uh, I have 20 terabytes to work with. So it is great to have so much space and not worry about that in the long run. Now, eventually when those 20 terabytes fill up, I have to replace both drives at the same time because they are configured in RAID 0, so you can only work with two drives at the same time. But, it's the, but the upgrade process is actually very straightforward. Uh, you can just use the disk replacement tool and just swap it out and swap it back in with the new drives and you're good to go. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the dual external RAID storage system from Western Digital. What do you guys think about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. More specifically, would you consider going this route uh, versus picking up two separate uh, Western Digital RAID drives? 
Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ebro with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.